What's up YouTube, it's your boy David. This is gonna be my first time ever doing a YouTube video. I'm gonna be doing a slick back mid fade. This is gonna be more like a transformation slash tutorial video. This video wasn't intended to be a YouTube video. I just always wanted to start a channel and I had extra content on this haircut. And I was like, you know what, fuck it. Let me do a, a tutorial slash, you know, transformation. I don't give out all my, you know, all my keys and fading. But after this video, everything, everything I know will be given out. I'm not going to be charging for this. You know, if you guys ever want to learn anything about haircuts as I progress through my career too, you know, you guys can just tune into my channel and get some extra keys. I kind of split his hair in half from both sides of the head from the corner of his head, kind of separating the hair from the parietal ridge to the top of the crown of the head. And usually I would go in with clipper over comb. In that in this section just right off the bat and start fading but i recently went to a you know an edu uh, educational class in in la with crispy fades and Burke styles and they're kind of unique hair cutters they really like keeping a lot of contrast in their hair it makes it look a lot better a lot more blurry and especially with longer hair it just adds that extra touch that you know it, it does take a lot more time to fade fade out like that but the end result is worth it. So if you guys have never tried it, I suggest you guys try it out on somebody that has longer hair and kind of just go through these steps that I show in this video. If you guys want to achieve that nice and crispy contrasted fade. I feel like I don't really have an explanation for why this works, but I just feel like it makes sense. You're evening out the hair from the top of the head to the bottom because obviously in the top, it's a lot longer. So it just creates a smoother section not gonna take off too much hair like you still want to keep hair on the on the side so you can fade out this is just to get you know your 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 canvas clean i don't really use clipper over comb to you know really fade anything out this is just to get rid of the bulk real fast so i can go in and set my guideline so once everything's set you know you want to go in with your magic clip closed and you want to aim for that C cup area. Everyone has a different C cup, but you want to aim for the middle and angle it towards the back of his occipital bone. So I like doing that on usually all my mid fades and, you know, do my low fades the same way, but I obviously go lower on my low fades. So I start off at the middle of the C and the highest point is at the top of his ear and I dip it down towards his occipital bone. So every client has a different size head so you have to be able to, you know, um, be able to identify and and really give the best fade to that client's head as possible, because you don't want to give a, a client that has a bigger head a smaller fade. You know, you're just going to give them a, a low fade instead of a mid fade. So I like do, uh, doing the, the guideline on one side of the head, then I do it on the other side and then I connect it in the back just to make sure that everything's even. I don't, you know, you, you don't want a, a, a lopsided fade. <clears throat> and I want you guys to pay attention everything below to this red line right here to on how I got the crispy transition from skin to stubble. That white line represents the soft trimmer line. I use the trimmer that's not zero gapped and I hit that right there in that section. And then I use the trimmer that's zero gap, that's really powerful, and I went underneath that. And then I, after that, I shaved everything, and you know, it, it usually tends out to come on crisp. If there's other, you know, little small lines, I go ahead and, and I grab my soft trimmer and I get rid of those lines. But then I like to go in with the one and a half guard, no, with the one guard open, and I like setting a guideline, you know, maybe about an inch and a half. I don't really want to go about measurements, but you know because every but every client's head is different so i kind of just like measuring it you know it's just off instinct and then splitting that guideline with the with my lever open with the magic clip and my magic clip is zero gapped and i got these angles for my ig video like i said this was i wasn't really trying to make this a youtube but i'm gonna still give out some keys that i use so that red line represents the magic clip with the lever open and I split my guideline. So that section is a one and a half and I split it with the 0.5. And the way that I get rid of this guideline is I put my lever in the middle and I hit it below that 0.5 guideline. And once I have it in the middle and I hit the whole section, I go and I, and I hit it higher and I open the lever. 
and I'm basically just lever playing it out. And I do the same technique for both the one guard and the half guard. And I'll just show you guys a, a, little, a little demonstration on a different client that I did explain how I, you know, went about my steps. And I, wa I just wanted to, you know, throw out a little, a little sneak peek. That's the wrong way to do it. You don't want to dig into the client's skin. You want to graze it off the top of the head and slide it and really flick up with the one and a half guard, with, with, with the one and a half. I'm sorry, I was fucking stuttering and shit. But <laughs> it's my first time talking on the fucking camera. My bad. So y you want to just lever play it out and, you know, flick up. You guys see how crisp that comes out. That's going to be my next, my next tour is going to be a mid-low fade. It's a little sneak peek. So you guys go ahead and, you know, tune in to my next video that I'm going to drop on Sunday. But the way that I like doing my hooks on my clients, I like starting it from the top in the corner of the head. And then I like... I like lining it up in the middle. You know, I, I go from the top and then I start at the bottom and I meet in the middle. So to prep my client's hair, I like using um, Mason sea salt spray. You know, at the class that I went that I got taught those new techniques, you know, they even taught us how to blow dry and shit like that. I didn't really do it that fancy. I did, did it pretty quick, but I like doing it just so I can see if there's extra, extra, you know, dense hair that I, you know, that I can thin out. You know, give it some slight texture. He didn't really want no texture, but just wa wanted to, you know, remove some weight so it, it's a lot more crispier and it's a lot easier for him to comb his hair back. So detailing is probably the most important part of fading because your machine's not really gonna get out all the hair. You have to go in with your with your combs and you have to make sure you, you know, you aim for those dark spots and that's the final result when you do all those techniques that I just mentioned, you know, if you guys fuck with this haircut let me know in the comment section if you guys want to see more haircuts or you know you guys have any other ideas i'm down to do anything haircut related for now i might drop other other things like travel and like workouts and stuff like that but i'm gonna keep it strictly haircuts for now my boy's happy as fuck he got a fresh ass fade you know combing his hair through he's like shit you know i look good it's the final haircut the final result of you know i'm gonna give it my all in every video that i drop i'll make sure you guys get the best quality content and, you know it's just it's it's just all a process you know you I, i'm gonna embrace this process whether i got one follow one subscriber or one or ten or 100 or a thousand i'm gonna keep trying to drop heat for you guys even if this impacts one person i'm, I'm cool with it you know i'm gonna just keep trying to be consistent and drop videos for you guys so thank you guys thanks for tuning in and catch me next time